Are you sure he wants to do this interview with you? I don't know if he really likes you. There were complicated you. negotiations. Ba apparently. And I they are very fragile. Sure. You are risk. You are putting them at risk by saying this. <laughs> He's Mike Zimmer. Coach, all right. <laughs> Coach, just let me know, though, if you ever want me just to lay the smack down on him, I will do it free of charge. You do okay? it anyway. I know, but I'll do it extra for Coach. I'll be glad to do it for myself. I'll be glad to do it. Yes. That was Mike Zimmer, the Vikings head coach, with us at the league meetings. Hey, Zimmer and I are fine now. Yeah. Everything is good. Whatever was there is no longer there until I keep talking about it so much that it is there again, all over again. Right. We were there, and now is the time. We usually do it on Wednesday, but now is the time we get to air our grievances for the week. And I will let you go first as long as we don't hear about your hotel room with the sink where the bed is. Other than that, feel free to grieve away. Hey, you know you're at a good hotel when you can roll over in bed and almost <laughs> wash your hands at the same time. That's when you know you go, damn, this place is special, okay? All right. <laughs> all right. All right. I, my, my airing agreement. I didn't have that feature in my room, no, so yeah, I, I of guess course my room you wasn't all that good. Yeah, no, yeah, right, exactly. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump off a little bit right where we left off there with Mike Zimmer. I had a few, I had two coaches, okay? I'm not going to name names, anything like that, but were a little disappointed about a negative thing I might have said during the season or evaluating them or whatever it may be, and they wanted to make sure I knew about it when we were at the owners' meetings, okay? And you know what? That's fine. I have no problem with that. I understand sometimes I may say sometimes I'm wrong. I admit that. But my grievance is, you know, I just don't want to hear about it because, you know, if you're not going to call me and thank me or do something like that or say, hey, you know, you know, I watch you a hundred other times and you said really nice things about me and I appreciate it or blah, 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 then I just don't want to hear about, you know, oh, I said one bad thing about you and that's all I paid attention to. I hate that crap because I had two coaches, like I told you, that came up to me and voiced some displeasure and not that I don't, you know, I, I understand it. I appreciate them coming up to me face to face and saying that, but at the same time, you know, hey, come on, sensitivity card too. Okay, that's out there. Let's please. I mean, you know, in, in these two cases, uh, I argued back. Yeah, but you know, you, you have you you must not watch. But what about the other hundred things I say positive about you? I never get any feedback for that. Like, hey, thanks for sticking up for me, or good point, or you know, everybody's on me, but you stuck up for me. None of that. So that's my first grievance. Don't want to hear it from any of the coaches anymore. Shut up. Chris, but don't you realize this is how it goes? Yeah. They never pay any attention to the praise. I know. They only pay attention to the criticism. And I, I've had this issue with plenty of people throughout the league and people at the league office. You know, I'll, I'll run into certain people from the league office and they'll say, oh, well, you got to say something something nice. Well, well, you're not paying attention to the 99 nice things I say. You're only obsessing over the one thing that you disagree with that yes. you don't like that criticizes you. So I agree with you. And let me just share this. Right. I, I had I had a couple of experiences, although not as direct as yours. That there was one situation on that Monday night event that they have out on the lawn where everybody kind of mingles and gets along, and it's about I, I love that event. That I that, that there was a, and I'm not even going to specify what position the person holds. Somebody gave me the shoulder oh, accidental bump while walking by. Little illegal contact. Okay. The little, the little <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry about that. And I kind of, I laughed it off and I thought, hmm, uh, was that really an accident? Or are you trying to send me a message? And if if so, you got to come at me with a little bit more than that, buddy boy. Not, <laughs> not that that's a hint as to who it was because we had John Dorsey on the program and right. he was great. He gets it. He understands how, how the world works and you're going to get a certain amount of criticism, but you're going to get a certain amount of praise. And you know what? You, we're not doing our jobs. If we're not candid, there was what else happened? Uh, I better be careful how I phrase my words here. But I, 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 I agree with you that that is a real dynamic. And and let me just throw out an item of praise here. Uh, while we're generally without naming names, identifying folks who may have have disrespected us, Frank Reich, the Colts head coach, came over to the set yesterday to apologize for not being able to make it onto the show because we had him penciled in a couple of times and it didn't work out. And he he wanted – and that's the first time that's ever happened in all the years I've been doing this, that somebody who we tried to book – and we understand we can't – you know, there's a lot of moving parts. Yes. They're coming in and out of meetings. They're leaving meetings. And maybe there's a stack of people waiting to be interviewed. He came over to say, I'm sorry that we weren't able to make it work. And it's like, you know, this guy gets it. He yeah, gets it. Right. And, uh, 
Um, and yeah. he, and also, if we have to criticize him at some point, he's not going to get bent out of shape it about personal. it. He's going to understand right. that this is the way it works. Yes, exactly right. I mean, they're grown men. We do it to everybody. You're being paid a lot of money. And yes, I mean, uh, we're critical at times, but at, at the same time, we do show praise, and it's just part of the job. I know I had to do, go through it as a, as a quarterback in the NFL. I certainly would see people at my locker when the media would come in and go, damn, blah, 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 just told me you wrote some crappy article about me. But who cares? What what what, what I, you know, hey, it's their job, and more times than not, when they wrote something crappy about me or something I did playing-wise, it was true. I played like crap, or I made a dumb decision. So, you know, you just got, sometimes just got to take it on the chest and realize you're being paid a lot of money uh, to play a sport, and it's part of the job is taking that criticism. And as one of those guys who criticized you when you played, I can confirm that that criticism did indeed happen. Let me just share one more thing, though, and I'm trying to say I don't because, look, I, I feel like the whole experience is kind of off the record and I don't want to call anyone out. But but there was an employee. I'm not going to be any more specific than that. Yeah. Of an organization of which I have been critical in the recent past that I saw yesterday and hello, hello. And then I heard I heard a little I heard a little something on the back end. You know you get that little mutter. You know what I mean? Yeah. After you pass with something. Yeah, sure. Yeah, a little, there was a there was a little mutter. And if you're if you're watching or listening out there, individual that I passed yesterday, I, I heard you, and that's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. But uh, I, I I did hear you. So okay. Message you, sent and message received. Oh, you sure? You sure you're not just being paranoid or something? No, 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 no. No, I I heard I heard something. I heard <laughs> <Okay>. something. <laughs> yeah. And there was nobody else around. All right. So uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I heard something. I like All right. it. Here, here, here's my here's my grievance, and and this relates to the competition committee generally, with the exception of Sean Payton, who was the one that seemed to understand which way the wind was blowing, or at least which way it needed to blow. There was a disconnect between what the competition committee was trying to do and what ownership ultimately did. And I think that, you know, we, we a, a lot of times people like genuflect at the altar of the competition committee that they are the influential rulemaking body. Now, a lot of times they, they, they recommend something that gets ignored, that doesn't get passed. That That is not an uncommon event. And I think part of the obligation of being on that committee and specifically being the chairperson, as Rich McKay is, you have to project. You have to have foresight as to how this is all going to play in the room, which means you better be working the phone lines to talk to people, owners, coaches, et cetera, to make sure that what you guys are trying to do meshes with what people are going to want when it's time to have these meetings so we don't have to make sausage in one day. Because a lot of the concerns we raised earlier about some of the nuances of replay review for pass interference, these are things that could have been discussed and planned for ahead of time if Tuesday wasn't about getting everything lined up to where it needs to be because Rich McKay and the competition committee didn't properly anticipate what was going to happen when they got to Arizona. I think it's part of the obligation of the gig. I know it's not easy, but part of the obligation is to anticipate what's going to happen once you get there to the site of the league meeting so you can properly support, influence, whatever the process to get to the right spot. And I don't like the idea of all this being thrown together in a day. Yeah, I, I, I remember you. back when, back, back when I was practicing law. Give me, let me give this example. If somebody ever had to like pull an all-nighter and stay at the office all night, like that was kind of a badge of honor. Oh, I pulled an all-nighter. But the people who got it said, if you had your act together, you wouldn't have had to pull the all-nighter. Right. And chances are, when you're working all night like that, you're going to make mistakes that you wouldn't have made if you'd have been doing your work in a more diligent fashion. No no, no doubt about it. You're right. It, it, it does seem like it almost catches everybody by surprise we're there, and they're kind of figuring it out on the fly in the hour or two-hour meetings that they're all having together, the coaches, the owners, the GMs, everything like that. Uh, yeah, you would think there would be a little more conversation leading up to it to not only just change the rule, but okay, we're leaning towards we want to change the rule and why we're having this conversation, you know, a month before the owners' meetings and all that. This is what we like. Let's start thinking about some of the issues that could come about uh, if we do change this rule. So you're further down the conversation line uh, when all said and done, and you can hash out more problems instead of, uh, yes, now them trying to all figure it out before they're all leaving the hotel or going to play golf or whatever it may be. It does seem like there's a little bit of disconnect there. So uh, that's a good one. All right. Uh, I think my other one, you know, it, it, it's a grievance just because I, I just want to remind everybody, and it's almost like the, I, I want to talk about like the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is something my, my uh, MDS, Michael David Smith, wrote yesterday about the – 
non Pass, under, pass interference calls or pass interference calls that sway the game. And I just want to remind everybody, um, again, I always believe in this, the football gods, football karma, right? The New Orleans Saints, I know they got screwed in the NFC Championship game. I really am not trying to take anything away from that. I, I feel for Sean Payton and Drew Brees and the, and the Saints fans and all of that. But I also just want to remind everybody, too, you know, they were the benefit, uh, benefiter uh, or benefactor of three. Beneficiary. 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 Thank you very much. Third time's always a charm. You know it. Well, I need help after two. But uh, either way, they were the beneficiary of three very bad calls in week 16 against the, uh, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the New Orleans Saints where Pittsburgh was controlling the game. Pittsburgh was called on pass interference on two fourth down plays. One was in the end zone on Joe Hayden. Uh, another one was a, a defensive penalty called on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And there was another one for the game winning touchdown, basically by the New Orleans Saints that was offensive pass interference. So, you know, again, I'm just reminding everybody out there if that played out the right way and there wasn't uh, and there was the correct call made, I don't know, maybe New Orleans Saints are on the road in that NFC championship game in LA. And it's a whole different scenario either way. And Pittsburgh is probably in the playoffs. So they have as much to complain about this, uh, you know, in a way as the New Orleans Saints do. That's all I'm trying to say there. Yeah. I don't know what you're trying to say. My next grievance is, I don't know what you just said. Well, What's your point? My, my, my point. I, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. No, okay. I understand yeah. what you're saying, right. but the bottom line is you don't want games to be decided by bad right. calls, regardless of whether you are the beneficiary of that or the party who gets screwed. Yes. One last quick one on the way out the yeah. door. Quick, quick grievance to anyone out there who is suggesting that our comments about those who we criticize reflect an unwillingness by us to accept criticism. We, we gladly take criticism. We, just check out social media. Check out the comments at the profootballtalk.com website. I, you can criticize us all you want. As long as the check clears, I don't care what you say. And it's part of that passion that brings you to, to football and brings you to the show, brings you to the website in the first right. place. If you want to criticize us, go ahead. And every once in a while, we actually learn something from it. No problem. Quick no break. Doubt. More PFT Live coming at you right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.